Hi everybody, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I just wanted to do a discussion on sealing the Columbia and Snake River and uh, called up a couple of these locks and talked with them and they said that it takes about three days for a traditional barge to make it down the river. So multiply that by two or maybe even three to get sailing uh, depending on the wind. And of course this is kind of a... Uh, Certain parts of it could be very windy, other parts could be not so windy, and also it uh, could be kind of thin uh, in certain areas, but uh, it's a really exciting and beautiful area to sail. Um, I could say that, uh, you know, maybe uh, actually sailing up it might be a lot easier than you think because the wind is typically going with you, um, although the current is going against you. Um, the current actually goes quite slow. I was out there in a raft just kind of uh, boating around and didn't really notice too much of a problem. Uh, so I made this really huge document um, and it's basically about 42 pages. But uh, we're talking about uh, 350 miles. I just said 500 miles to be safe. Um, and uh, the average wind speed is about seven nautical miles per hour and it's usually going against you if you're going uh, with the river, uh, if you're going up the river, uh, you actually benefit usually from the wind and you don't have to tack and things like that. Uh, from a lot of the maps, you know, it can range uh, from a uh, hundred and so feet deep to about uh, 40 feet and even less in certain areas. And it can be very tight uh, sailing through there. So I have a bunch of nautical maps here and kind of uh, some links so you can see. Uh, and then there's kind of a wind map. Um, so uh, I'm not sure where to start with this. Um, I'm just going to show you uh, one of these links here. Load up a couple of these guys um, so you can kind of see. Um, so this is the overview of what we're talking about here when it comes to sealing the whole entire Columbia River and then this little offshoot to uh, Lewiston and the Snake River. So I don't really know exactly what you can do up through this way. Um, the Columbia River does uh, actually kind of shift and go up through this way. Um, but this part of the river is actually very interesting and uh, beautiful as well. Um, it actually gets a little bit dry uh, in this area. So there's basically uh, three sections uh, that I would say. So the first section is this part here. If you're, most people would probably be coming in through the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Astoria is a really pretty little port. So I definitely recommend uh, docking there for a night or even a week. Um, and uh, you can, uh, I can zoom in here and kind of show you what's going on here in Astoria. Uh, but basically this whole area, so what I would say is plan on 30 to maybe at most 60 miles a day. Um, and 60 miles is essentially one little leg right through like here. So this would be like one day, two days, three days, four days, five. And right there you're talking about 10 days uh, going at that speed. So that would be about half. So this, this middle section is another section here. So I'm basically dividing it up into three parts, right? So there's this first part, kind of a Portland area, and then there's this in-between area before the Tri-Cities, and then another area through here, which is pretty smooth, but there is a lot of locks and dams. So uh, we're gonna get into as many details as possible, hopefully. Um, looks like it's trying to load this, so you can kind of see uh, what's going on here it starts to load in more and more detail as you get uh, the details here so actually i believe this is the furthest part that you can get inland um and the reason for that is kind of uh partly volcanic which you can kind of see you can see these big volcanoes here uh but there's a just a huge canyon and it's unbelievably awesome and beautiful so kind of see the picture here of uh, this canyon um and it's certainly, even this is a, a big part of the canyon, but it gets bigger than that, I would say, in certain portions. Uh, the wind, in general, you can kind of see, kind of comes up through here. Um, let me see if I can load up a wind map for you. While that's loading, you can take a look at some other things. So essentially, you're kind of looking at this whole area here. This is kind of Vancouver Island, Seattle, and then Portland. So there's 
actually a little bit of a spot through here and then it gets to be canyons and then all the way into here so it's just a huge amount of uh land to traverse there um now there's a number of nautical maps that you can download if you click on this you can download all these maps and it has uh details for that and then there's certain um confidence zones so you don't necessarily know uh what the, the uh and i would say certainly by a uh, clerks in the port i visited the port several times and i noticed that uh there's a lot of very shallow areas, even though it says 19 feet, uh, I would say it's probably about four or five feet, maybe even, you know, just to be safe. So we're basically looking for at least uh, 10 feet, I would say, of water in most areas. Now here's kind of the schedule of the dams. So basically if you're going up river, they have them um, on the hour at 9, 12, 3, 6 and 9 p.m. and then after that you'd have to call them and I'm not even sure I, if they can do something you have to call them 24 hours in advance it says here so here's some of the phone numbers uh, for them and you basically talk on your VHF channel 14 uh, to each of the locks um, there are some rules and regulations here's kind of an overall map of the whole lock system that you can see um, so basically what I did is I divided it up I did like a road view to kind of see where the particular spots are that I might want to uh, dock or camp at. So on this map, I'll just load this up and that uh, will take a little bit. It's probably not even going to load. But anyway, so I, I picked out all these little locations. So on the nautical maps, uh, there's basically two types here. So Navionics has one. This boating map has one. And then if you go to the top here, uh, this is kind of the NOAA charts, and you can uh, locate your chart that you want um, on the NOAA locator if it loads. So basically, you can click here for PDF, and then you can download the PDF, or if you have a, a free tool for uh, viewing the charts, you can also do it that way. So basically, this is the area right in here that we're looking at. So these are the chart names and you can kind of select the region that you want all the way up into Lewiston. And it looks like that is the only way to go. So even this, you can't really go up through there. So I don't know the details on that and I'm maybe discuss that at some other point, but I live out here in Idaho. So I thought it was really amazing just to try to uh, see what it would take to, uh, get this whole area. So those are the charts. Um, the other way to do this is to kind of look at the road maps and kind of zoom in and it's going to take a little while. So here is an example of how this might work. So it's uh, taking a second here. Sorry about this. So as you zoom in, you can kind of see. So this Astoria port doesn't really tell you too much. I'm going to have to load it up on uh, Google Earth. Uh, but in general, these are the ports. Um, these are the ports. So there's a little port here. It's a great little town. I visited this just to kind of preview the whole um, the whole trip. Um, so what I did is these little marinas here, I picked off a few that I thought were reasonable and good points to even dock. So the really hard part about this is there is a channel through here that isn't there's a lot of shallow spots in here. So you definitely got to take the channel through here. And then there's a marina in here. So right there, this is two miles. So, you know, this could be a little bit of a trek right here. This is 10 miles. And then this is, say, 20 miles, right? So I would just wait at this point once you got to this marina or even try to get to this marina here. So that's about the most you can day, make in a day. So on the charts, Navionics kind of shows you the details here. I uh, So you can kind of see this channel. And these little pink guys are the marinas. Some of them have gas, some of them don't. So because we're going up against the river, uh, on a sailboat, the thing is the wind usually blows in through here, which is nice. So... Uh, but you have to be able to drop your sails quick and, uh, you know, motor if you need. So all of this is the uh, channel so you can kind of see uh, what's going on. And um, unfortunately, 
so if you want to get all these settings, you kind of got to go through the menu and click map options and then do satellite uh, settings. So these satellite view shows up here, but you can kind of see this uh, path. Now along the path, um, now here was a marina. Now, so I, I chose certain marinas and others not. So basically this marina is further down here and you can kind of see uh, the reason this might be a pain is that I, I don't necessarily know about this area through here. It looks like there's some pretty shallow two foot spots. So if you go to this marina uh, and I talked to the guy, he said, yeah, everything's fine. It's great to get in here, but you might have to go all the way back here, which is a good uh, mile or so, a couple miles to get all the way back around here and then follow back down the channel. So I don't know if I'd take this route. Maybe if you have a regular, not sailboat, uh, just a flat bottom boat, you could maybe make it through there, no problem. Uh, but I don't know. So, and the other problem is with the ships. So if you look at the uh, marine traffic map, traffic map. So I have a marine traffic map that I often check. I'll load this up while that's loading. We can continue on the, with the discussion. So, uh, but basically, the so if you look at this whole area, you know you you got to go through the channel here, around here, and then somewhere in here you're gonna have to park overnight. Now they actually make it quite easy to park in this area through just outside of Portland. So. I probably would not go down here into Portland and park there. There's actually a spot right in here along these islands here. So this is quite thin, um, but it's, it's big. But for a sailboat, you know, it's nice to have a couple miles uh, to be able to tack back and forth. So if you compare this uh, to, uh, you know, the Puget Sound area, you know, I would say, you know, certainly this is enough with, uh, in here to tack and do a lot of things, but it's not always the case. Uh, you're talking about you know one sixth of the width of this, which is pretty good, um, but it could be quite draining just to tack up the river. And you're actually tacking this way typically. So from what I gather, the wind is typically coming across from from the west coast over to the east. So and uh, so really. Uh, the couple hard parts here, this this initial part, you know, you got to know where the channel is. They are going to have buoys. And even further down, way down here, 300 miles into it, they have lit buoys at night that do flash. But you probably don't want to do this sailing at night. I would definitely not recommend that. Um, and uh, But the good news is that if you look at the uh, the chart here that I made, I picked a bunch of spots here, these marinas. So these little white dots, so here's a Cornerstone Cafe. So I'm just gonna go through and show you these really quick. So here's an Astoria picture, right? And you can see this is the river. Then there's another little marina right in here. And this was the marina on the edge. So this, you know, and I'm not even sure about this uh, bridge. On the maps they do show which bridges another river is actually flowing this way so you can get out of the marina and then come back to the channel so that is one marina possibility for overnight spots now the other overnight spot is over in here so if you look at this there's a little dock I just made sure there was little docks along these ways and it looks like you have a public restroom here and there is some other docking spaces so if you look at where that is along the river you'll see that Along the river here, they little, show these little anchor points. These are anchor points where you can anchor and stay out of the, you never want to anchor in the channel because this gets pretty busy. So if you look at this, you can start to see, this is the marine traffic map, map for globally. And you can see, obviously, Seattle has a lot more boats even right now. But I was shocked at how few boats there was. And uh, although it does show a lot of boats here, it's actually surprising how few. So quite a lot of boats here in Portland, but after you get past Portland, really not much at all. These are all tugboats, these blue ones. So uh, those guys, um, and then you have some of these green ones here um, and so on. But basically this will show the traffic. We could maybe zoom in a little bit to see what Portland looks like. 
and you can kind of see so Portland's actually down in here and I don't even know if that would be worth it there's only a couple docks in here most of the docks are off in here in Portland so might be best to just uh, take a cab or uh, walk actually a couple miles into Portland um, and uh, that would be about four miles or so so that's not too bad um, and then maybe bike or something but uh, these docks looked acceptable around here so I can maybe zoom in here to show you what these docks look like so there's a little island here and actually you can even dock on this side and this one looked like the preferred spot and it looked like they had a gas station there as well so anyway so to get back to uh, the basics here um, so basically uh, that right there gets you in about two three I would say three days just to Portland just to be safe and probably even four so uh, but remember we're saying at the, on an open ocean you can sail maybe 100 miles a day and then on the river I would say 50 let's say right so 50 miles is like here right at most um, and basically that the problem here is there's not many places to anchor right here so you almost have to take this little marina and uh, what I would say is that uh, as the river turns these deposits so you can see that the deposits are made on the outside and the the, the deeper parts are on the, the short side right so this is all the river kind of came through here and dropped all this stuff here and then it kind of so as you go on the outside that's where it gets shallow and the deeper part is on this side so you can kind of use that as a general guide but it's not always the case and for sure i did notice some rocks in the middle of the river uh, but that's further as you get there's there's rocks everywhere so you got to be careful um i didn't notice a whole whole lot but um there are some rocks so some of those are marked um with buoys and and things so so basically to to make this uh, concluded I'll kind of get into some more details but uh, maybe with a separate video but what I would say is in general that's kind of the trip all the way to get into Portland which would be a couple days and it's quite a hefty drive even from Portland out to Astoria I would say so you know giving yourself uh, a few days at least three four days five days you know depending on what you're trying to do uh, and then there's this whole area here where it gets really dry right before this mountain range um, and valley area. So this is a whole separate area. So what I did is I basically added separate maps for each of these. So if you're interested, I'll post a link. But basically, there's what I did is I did two halves. So on the uh, on this path. I put these little mooring spots so you can look at them, ride to them, drive to them, or just see on the map. So there's a little marina here you can see, and it looks like it's got quite a number of little spots. It's kind of taking some time to load in, but there's a little... I try to make sure that there's little restaurants nearby. You can dock and pull in. And I was really surprised how great uh, the marinas are and even little park uh, areas are to uh, talk about uh, but they are quite far from each other maybe at least 30 miles some cases even more so once you see one you pretty much should stop at the marina or dock spot um, certainly to fill up with uh, make sure everything is good um, so there's another little private spot I wasn't sure fishery Inc I'm not sure what's going on with these um, and then so to make a long story short is these white little dots are the ones that I said to stop at so I kind of divided it up into two halves so I have one map section for this first part and then the second map section for this other part but really you can divide this up into six days so it's not gonna be quite you know maybe three or four days just on this one side four days and four days which would be eight so that's if you really want to take your time and I've seen people take months um, to uh, make it up there there was a guy discussing it so uh, on the second part if you click on this you can get the image and then I will take you to the map so 
this is just because I wanted to see on a non nautical map kind of the satellite view the nautical maps don't actually have enough detail for the uh, pictures to see what the marinas look like sometimes um, and there's a couple different nautical maps I tried to like show so here's a general the path that you can kind of see quite a far inland area um, and then kind of zoomed in in some of these pictures and you can kind of see what else going on so certainly there are some tough parts this looks pretty complicated you can kind of get lost if you're not really paying attention uh, in particularly this little area outside of Portland I would say that might be nice just to stop at the dock and say hey is anyone else going out to Astoria and really Astoria is a great it's an unbelievably great little town and great for uh, docking up there's so many spots there so uh, and the marina seemed really friendly and stuff like that so anyway this is we're on page 20 but in general uh, there's a bunch of other little stops so there are some like discussion on this coast pilot volume 10 and you can click on this and kind of get the uh, instructions if you will and all the regulations so they got navigational regulations general information they even do Puget Sound and Pacific Islands and other navigational rules um, but in general you have to have uh, be able to communicate with the bridges and talk with them I did say talk with them and they said you have to have life jackets and they like to have two ropes about 50 feet each on either side of your boat so that when the water is going up and down you can uh, keep your boat stable and here's some kind of zoom ins of some of the uh, locations and then of course lights on your boat um, for at night time and there's different little things here's some pictures of what it will look like it's really spectacular and some areas that you can't quite get to um, even further up this is maybe uh, just pass it so you can kind of see what goes on here with the columbia river here and then the snake river heading all the way out to uh here but you actually really stop right in there somewhere so and there's just a picture of what a dam looks like so you basically pull your boat up over on this side um you wait contact them on channel 14 oh hold on one second and then they drop it or fill it depending on the hour and which direction you're going so and you want to be careful uh, to drop the sails significantly before obviously and uh, make sure your engine's working and kind of some other just regulations and things anyway hope this has helped uh took me a little while to study all this and it was pretty interesting um certainly the best part about it is all the cliffs and uh just uh leisurely pace uh and super interesting um, geography uh, because you can get so far inland on a sailboat um, and the marina is certainly a really great marina it's uh, about uh, fairly affordable per month about half the cost of most of the other marinas on the river and uh, hope you're doing good see you